Good? Okay. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Rob Myallis, and welcome to worship today. And whether you're here in the sanctuary or calling in or watching online, we trust and rejoice that the Holy Spirit has called us together this day that we may praise the living Lord. I invite you now to take a breath and to know that God's presence is with us. Please rise as you are able. We worship in the name in which we baptize, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin. Receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pause for reflection as we together confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good and glorious news. By grace you have been saved. Out of great love God sent Jesus Christ, the beloved Son, to die for your sins. And as Jesus rises and lives victorious from the grave, I declare to you that in his name your sins are forgiven. Amen and Alleluia. 
Together we join in singing hymn number 533, verses 1, 2, and 3, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, Glory to God and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God. 
to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, and peace to God's people on earth. And peace to God's people on earth. You have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for a word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his Spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We will read responsibly. Psalm 145. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. Please rise as you are able. According to you, St. John, glory, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias, and a large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. 
When Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus turned to one of the disciples, Philip, and he asked Philip, where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? Jesus said this to test Philip, for Jesus himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get even a little. One of his other disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to Jesus, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place. So they all sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he gave them to those who were seated, and also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed a prophet who has come into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Invite you to say a prayer with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I invite you to be seated. It might be easy for us to judge the ridiculousness of Philip's statement. For Jesus has said to Philip, you need to feed these people. And the response of Philip is to say, there ain't enough money here to do this. There isn't enough, Jesus Likewise, Andrew, another disciple, reports that, well, there is a little bit of something, five loaves and two fish, but that is also not enough. And there's a sort of a ridiculousness that the disciples are looking at Jesus, the one in whom all things in the universe came into being, and they're saying, we don't have enough. Uh, it's it's uh, to the point of being laughable. It's so absurd to look at Jesus and tell Jesus that there isn't enough. Again, it would be easy for us to criticize and even judge Philip and Andrew for the failure of their faith to see that they were living and they were walking with beholding the one in whom there is always enough. But truthfully, I think many of us at points in our lives find ourselves offering the same confession, the same statement that there does not seem to be enough. This last week on, on Tuesday, I was walking uh, from my house to the church and and I just felt like everything had an orange tint to it, as if I were sort of looking at life almost through like an Instagram filter, like everything just seemed orangey. And, and I kind of wondered, am I going crazy? But then I realized it was Noah's from the, the forest fires in the West. And I was so bummed about this, overwhelmed to the point of saying, what's going on in our world, in our climate? There doesn't seem to be enough science and enough willpower to do anything. And again, I found myself saying, there doesn't seem to be enough. When I think about what's happened at, at so many churches right now, and I, and I think about so many churches in our area as they, as they struggle. Again, we at St. Paul, we're really healthy right now. But I think of how many are struggling, and, and I think about the rising secular presence in our culture, and, and I say, there doesn't seem to be enough. There doesn't seem to be enough. I could give other examples, too, of, of other problems in our culture where I look at what's going on and I find myself sighing and saying, there doesn't seem to be enough. But it's not just about these big grand problems where I'm forced to confess that there's not enough as it seems. But I think on a more haunting and personal level, I think we begin to say these words. 
I was speaking with somebody this week about their business, and, and now they're at the point where they've, they need to bring back their employees. And they're trying to figure this out, right? Some people want to come back. Others don't. Many are vaccinated, but not everyone. Some partners really want them to move ahead. Others are happy with everybody working at home. And it's this sort of this grand mess. And in those situations, we think about the change in everything and how we all deal with what has happened. And I think many of us find ourselves saying, not just there's not enough, but I'm not enough. I think that the last year has been hard on many of the relationships in our families. In between the generations, and I would even say, yes, within marriages, as the social and sociological and psychological toll of the last year wore on, I think many of us have found ourselves in our own home, in our own family, saying, I'm not enough. I could go on to the various other situations, grief, anxiety, addiction, just whatever it is. And I think we all can admit that we have found ourselves at some point saying, I am not. I am not enough. But then comes riding in on a white stallion, the gods of self-help. And the gods of self-help tell us, we just need to look in that mirror pound our chest and say, I'm enough. And if we just say it enough and we put it enough on all of our social media feeds, then we can finally be enough for this world. And we can do all that we thought we were supposed to. I'd like to suggest that that is a grand lie. That we are, in fact, enough on our own. This is not, in fact, how we were built as humans. This is not how we were built as humans, and we tend to quickly forget this. In the gospel reading today, Philip and Andrew do not have enough. They lack the bread and they lack the faith. But you see, but you see somebody, somebody who didn't have enough to feed everybody, somebody who wasn't enough, somebody brought something to the table. They brought their five loaves and two fish. And it, and it turns out that we may not be enough, but we can bring something to the table. And when we bring something to the table, then, then God can do something great and miraculous with it. Again, our challenge as humans is not to be enough on our own independent self-sufficient, but rather to bring to the table what God has given us. Yesterday, I spent a lot of time watching soccer. And I'll just tell you, when team members behave like they're enough and stay in their position, it functions a lot better. It functions a lot better. But I, I wonder why it is, again, that in our culture, we would so believe that we need to be enough, totally independent. And I think it has something, again, to do with the way in which we celebrate the individual. This is something deep within our American psyche to celebrate the individual. And I'm not even going to uplift contentious recent social issues, which would highlight this. I'll let you preach that sermon to yourself. But instead, I, I want to bring up sort of a, a, an easy example of this. A few years back, there was a man who set a record for the fastest marathon. And in fact, he ran the whole marathon, every single mile, he ran in under four minutes. Just, I mean, again, most of us couldn't do 100 yards at a four-minute pace, but he ran 26.2 miles at an under four-minute pace. Really incredible. And so you, you look at the stories online or in the papers, and it shows this, this one person in really colorful clothing crossing the finish line, and he did it. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's more complicated than that, and it's a lot more interesting. It turns out that he didn't do it alone. Not only did he have a family and trainers and supporters and all this, but every single mile that he ran, there were 26 people, 26 others, who ran for one mile with him. And their job was to just keep the pace in under four minutes. All they had to do was run their one mile. So that guy didn't have to think the entire race about how fast he had to run. 
They just ran their four, mi four minutes. See you later. Next person, four minutes. None of them on their own could have done the 26.2. But you see, they all had to work together. They all brought something to the table. They all brought something to the table. Again, we live under this cruel myth that somehow we've got to do it all on our own, that we have to be enough. But this isn't what life actually is all about. And it's not what the Gospels proclaim to us. The Gospels again and again show that what we're called to do is not pretend that we're enough, but bring to the table, bring the five loaves and two fish that God has given us. This last week, we really have gotten serious on, as a staff, about planning for the fall at the church, and we're getting very excited. And, and one of the things that's going to be different this fall is not just what we can do, but who can do it. And we're so excited to sort of really try to encourage and, and bring back and celebrate the volunteers at this church. And just in this last week, inviting and talking with the Sunday school teachers asking people to be confirmation mentors, planning to celebrate the work of the quilters, pondering how we can encourage people into to a program that we're, where we'll be able to mentor women out of poverty. I'm excited for, for this fall and, and to see everybody able, able finally after this last year and a half to really again bring all of our five loaves and our two fish and to see what God can do with it as God brings our gifts together. I said earlier that I think it is a cruel myth that we would ever believe that, that we could be enough on our own. And I think that's true just in terms of our neighbors, but I, it's also principally true in terms of God. We will never be enough without God. Again, we will never be enough without God. It turns out that we do not have to be enough because Jesus is enough. Again, Jesus is enough to take what we can offer and transform it into something bigger and more beautiful to multiply it. At the end of this story of the feeding, Jesus gives a command, and he, and he says to the disciples that they're to gather. And it's just one more of the things. Again, what are the five loaves and two fish that these disciples are bringing? Well, sometimes it may literally have been the five loaves and two fish. I also often wonder how many people, when, when seeing the generosity start, found more loaves and more fish that they had actually brought. And I was younger, I sort of thought this was a theological cop-out, that somehow Jesus just encouraged sharing rather than just multiplied food. But as I got older, I think that actually encouraging humans to share is more difficult than making bread out of thin air for God. But yet again, everybody is doing their part. Some are obeying, some are organizing, some are gathering, they're praying, they're listening. But in the end, Jesus says, gather these, gather these fragments that none may be lost. And, and you might think, okay, this is a good Pennsylvania Dutch person. Doesn't want to waste anything. But there's something deeper going on here. Turns out that word, word gather, that word gather has a religious significance. It means to gather people into a faith community, to synagogue people. And the word there for fragments, the word there for fragments means the broken. The broken. Jesus is telling his disciples to gather, to gather the broken into a community that none might be lost. This isn't about simply food. This is about people. It's about people like you and me who come each week acknowledging, however bitterly, that we are not enough. Come with our sins, with our brokenness. but we discover in Christ that he is enough. He is enough to cover, to heal, and to forgive us. And because Christ is enough, we no longer have to try to pretend that we're somehow sufficient. Instead, we can offer the five loaves and two fish 
and discover as we do this, both confident but also wondering if it's going to be enough still. And as we hand this over to Christ to look to our left and look to our right and to realize there's somebody else also giving their five loaves and two fish. And Christ is already at work multiplying and producing a harvest of abundance. Amen. Citing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With the communion of saints, let us offer our prayers to God. Gracious God, your Son fed the 5,000, which was a miracle to the needy and a sign of his power. You feed us today through your word and sacraments. May, may we be fed with your everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. 
Gracious God, we pray for the church around the world that as your body, we may feed others. Fill us to offer your peace, your justice, and your mercy to our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for our world, for those without a home, without food, without security, without warmth. Strengthen those fighting dangerous climates and rebuilding from disasters. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray for those in need of healing, especially those on our prayer list who mourn or are ill. We pray also for all those we now name to you aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, these things and whatever you know we need, we pray for in your holy name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. You may share the peace. There we go. Just some a uh, few announcements. Uh, this last week, we had our uh, some members of our youth group head out to Pittsburgh with some chaperones for a trip, and, and it was a really awesome trip. And I'm looking forward to uh, in a future Sunday when they have recovered uh, to hear more from them and to give them an opportunity to share. Uh, we also had uh, 15 of our church members this week at the Lutheran camp, so that was really exciting. And we also have 15 of our children today who have uh, done their memory work over the summer and will get to participate in a pool party. So uh, really excited for, for all of that. Um, also, uh, as you walked in today, there was a booth out there about a librarian student tuition program. And that's a way in which uh, you can help make it possible for somebody to be able to go to school. Uh, in a lot of places in the world, uh, the implications economically of the last year and a half have been severe, uh, and so this can really make a small amount of generosity. Five loaves and two fish on our end can make a big difference. Uh, also, uh, I want to thank, I want to give a shout out to a woman named Sylvia, who's not a member of this church, but uh, listened to my podcast uh, in which I lamented that I couldn't find Cracklin Oat Brand and pointed out where it was for me. So I want to thank uh, Sylvia for that. But we've been having uh, a lot of fun with that. Uh, I think we've discovered a format that seems to really be uh, connecting with people. Uh, and so we're going to keep uh, going uh, with that. But again, thanks for permission to try uh, this new kind of pod and pub format. Uh, lastly, we're, we're hoping at the end of the summer, uh, early in the fall, to welcome a, a class of new members. And if that's, I know some of you have already contacted the church office, but if you're interested in that, again, just contact the church office and then we'll get a, get a hold of you as we're uh, drawing that class together. I thank you for all of your financial support that allows us to, to subsidize and to make uh, youth mission trips and other things possible. And so with that, I invite us all to rise as we present our gifts. Thankful hearts and voices raised, tell everyone what God has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and bear the name of Christ. Send us with your promises and lead your people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Holy 
Halleluja, Halleluja. Let us pray together. Jesus, bread of life, you, you have, have set this, this table, table with, with your, your very self, self and called us to, to a feast of plenty. Gather what you have been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. And so at the church on earth and the host of heaven, we join their unending praise. she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to all, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we do this, we proclaim the great mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And in that great hope, we pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready. You may be seated. Uh, our online broadcast will shortly be ending. Again, if you would like us to take you communion, we have our Eucharistic ministers, or you can also come after this, uh, the outdoor service.